All right, good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Mark Kamoport. I'm a senior product manager in Juniper, and I'm delighted to be here with you for the first edition of this uh, OpenStack Day uh, here in beautiful Prague. Um, just a bit about me. <coughs> in terms of country product management team, I've been focusing mostly on telco and service provider use cases like NFV that leverage OpenStack at their virtual infrastructure layer. Uh, this is a market that Contrail originally targeted when it started uh, like two, three years ago. And we've already had a great success uh, in this market with Telco for NFV use cases like AT&T and Verizon in the US or DT and Orange here in Europe, uh, and TNT in, uh, in Asia. Uh, now, I understand that your topic and focus is more on the enterprise use cases and like cloud service provider use cases, so that's what I'm going to focus on this morning. Okay, uh, <clears throat> I'm not going to be as brave as uh, Jacob and Lachlan doing a live demo in front of a big audience. Um, what they have uh, presented this morning was covering both OpenStack uh, deployment with Kubernetes and uh, Open Control, and I'm just going to give you an insight on a number of uh, customer use cases. Uh, some of our customers who are using Open Control for their deployments, uh, including the ones from uh, Lithium and uh, TCP Cloud. Okay, briefly, what are the uh, trends we have seen in the cloud market area? The um, hardware layer, the converge, hyper-converge trend is, uh, is very hot. It's about simplifying uh, and standardizing the whole uh, hardware infrastructure for cost optimization, simplification, and, and scaling. Uh, and at the same time, we see a number of function and intelligence that used to be managed directly at the hardware layer that are moving in the upper software layers, like typically the uh, cloud orchestration layer with OpenStack. Um, at the same time, it, it's all about uh, open source, and um, the, we see a growing adoption of uh, uh, open source at every layer in the stack, uh, not just at the Open stack layer, obviously, but also underneath at the hardware layer, which we've seen in the hyperconverge with projects like uh, Open uh, Compute Project, for example, uh, that is used by um, Facebook, but also things like CoS, KVM, Kubernetes, so on, so on. So every element in the stack is moving uh, towards open source. On the application development front, um, We've seen that all the rage is around microservices, moving away from uh, vertically integrated monolithic applications uh, for the reasons uh, that were presented, all the benefits it gives you in terms of uh, fast development and even faster deployment and portability, which is critical in this environment. And uh, lastly, uh, we see this huge trend towards um, private and hybrid clouds. Most enterprises are transitioning to SaaS for their regular uh, um, enterprise services. Uh, that the, it provides better pricing, better feature. Uh, they are pretty much refocusing on their core business and critical application for their private uh, development application. Now, I want just to focus quickly on this public and SaaS cloud adoption trend to see what's happening. Uh, we've seen, first of all, so all the classical enterprise applications like mail, uh, ERP, so on and so forth, moving from um, on-site on deployment to pure SaaS model. At the same time, the developers that are moving from the monolithic uh, internal development um, framework uh, when they move to a, a pass uh, type of a framework, they have the possibility to use it either for internal private cloud or to use a public cloud. And they typically need uh, interconnectivity between the two. Not all the content or all application resides in one or the other. 
there are a number of uh, uh, enterprise critical data that still reside the, inside the uh, enterprise network. Now, quickly, I'm not going to make um, a broad pitch on Contrail. I'm going to give you a, a quick overview of what Contrail is and what it can do. We have a more detailed deep dive session this afternoon uh, that's going to be covered by my colleague uh, Bartwood at uh, 2 uh, p.m., I believe. So what is Contrail? In a nutshell, it is the uh, Juniper open source initiative um, based on Apache V2 licenses to provide network virtualization um, in the cloud environment, obviously OpenStack targeted, but not limited to OpenStack. It also supports container environment and bare metal workloads. Uh, it's fully API driven, uh, supporting all types of automations, uh, OpenStack Neutron uh, is obviously implemented, but also Amazon EC2 APIs are also supported. And it's kind of great in terms of being able to uh, horizontally scale, uh, to provide um, pretty much uh, an unlimited uh, deployment in terms of either single data center or multi data center coverage. It's high performance forwarding with a um, and I will go into more detail on that. Uh, dedicated implementation for the forwarding plane that resides in every uh, compute node. Um, so, since we are in an OpenStack event, I think it makes sense to refer to some of the latest survey that was published after the uh, OpenStack uh, summit in Austin uh, two months ago. And obviously, we see that uh, the regular open v switch, neutron implementation are the most common deployments used by OpenStack users. And this is fine for, I would say, regular deployments. Having said that, for demanding users who have complex use cases, large scale deployments, and that need advanced features like service chaining, for example. Uh, Open Control is leading the pack in terms of SDN control implementation. A quick overview of the different features uh, that Open Control provides, and uh, Hartwin in the afternoon is going to go into a couple of uh, more detailed capabilities, especially like around security and service chain. But I just want to highlight a couple of them, which are really differentiators. Uh, compared with what Vanilla Neutron can provide or even some of the other SDN control on the market. Um, security, which is really a, a key component on how you provide multi-tenancy and isolation across your different tenants. And this is something that is managed not only at the individual virtual machine layer, but across each and every virtual networks, where we have a rich policy engine to define what are the networking, connectivity, and security rules. Uh, across the different uh, tenants and workloads. A rich analytic engine, which is another major differentiator, and I will cover at the end of the presentation, what, at the end of the presentation some of the benefits of the uh, analytics engine that we have, like, for example, being able to do underlay, overlay correlation, giving you uh, real-time or historical statistics on what's happening inside your network. And service chaining, with the, which is one of the key requirements for a number of um, NFV use cases where you need to be able to steer the traffic between two tenants through a specific uh, network functions like uh, a security engine, a firewall, or any type of other uh, VNF. Oh, okay, there's a small animation. Let me skip it. So what is our approach to um, open source? Open control is, uh, first of all, we have two uh, main uh, tools that we use to, to manage the product. All the source code is hosted in a repo in GitHub. And at the same time, we use Launchpad for the management of the product, like the features, requirements, blueprints, but all of this is visible in, uh, in uh, Launchpad. And we get uh, requests either from customers or open source users that are sorted through Launchpad. Um, 
the community is developing the product. It's mainly driven by our engineers in Juniper, but there are also a number of uh, external contributors. And then from there, we provide the regular releases, typically two major, or th sorry, three major releases per year with a number of um, minor bug fixes, uh, releases coming also along the way. Uh, and the main differences between the, the user of the open content product versus the commercial licensed version that Juniper provides is basically the packaging and the hardening that we are doing uh, around it and the capacity to uh, get like 24-7 online support. So we have a, a number of packaging actually for, for the Contrail product. So the first one, which is the one that is typically used by um, enterprise customers in the cloud networking, this is really our SDN product that provides a network virtualization layer um, that supports pretty much most of the uh, main orchestra OpenStack orchestration vendors, Red Hat, Mirantis, Canonical. Now, for customers who want a more software package approach, we have the Contrail Cloud product, which provides on top of the networking pieces a server management component, um, set for scale-out storage, uh, an embedded, uh, integrated OpenStack uh, um, implementation based on Canonical and Ubuntu for the host OS. And lastly, uh, we also have like a cloud in a rack approach, our control cloud reference architecture, which provides a really fully tested and integrated solution that includes the entire hardware in a rack, uh, obviously the compute servers, but also the storage, the switches, uh, and the routers. This is part of our ecosystem, uh, where we have a number of partners uh, who are being tested and integrated in our solution. First of all, the NFV vendors here that provide solutions uh, like Firewall. We support our own um, SRX and virtual SRX firewall, obviously. We're also load balancing uh, products, cloud caching, DPI, uh, SBC, and other security vendors are also integrated in the solution. As I mentioned earlier, we support all the major open stack distributions, obviously, but also Docker and Kubernetes uh, integrations that are being used, for example, that were demonstrated this, this morning. And we also have an initiative to actually provide even um, faster performance by integrating our forwarding plane component, the, the vRouter engine, inside uh, the NIC of the servers, and we are working with uh, major NIC vendors like Intel, Broadcom, or Netronom to implement this component directly inside the NIC to provide hardware acceleration. So let's talk about the, the, the customer use cases. Before I, I'm going to cover uh, the five, six main enterprise use cases, just wanted to give you uh, one summarized view. Basically, what Contrail provides in all these different uh, customers, it, it's the networking glue for the uh, entire cloud and enterprise network, starting from the legacy servers and storage, typically uh, based on VLAN configuration, using VMware um, virtualization environment. Um, obviously, all the OpenStack, KVM, uh, Docker and Kubernetes environment is supported and we, we allow you to uh, service chain the traffic between different workloads through network functions, whether they are physical network functions, appliances provided by uh, F5, A10, all these guys, but also virtual network functions. Um, and we provide connectivity inside the data center and also outside, either to public cloud vendors uh, like Google, Amazon, so on and so forth, and to the enterprise network, 
Uh, typically, when you want to provide connectivity all the way to the uh, enterprise branch, uh, this is this is a part that we also cover in terms of connectivity. And you can apply the entire set of services across these different endpoints. So let's talk about the first enterprise use case that we have implemented. Uh, this is something we've done with uh, eBay Classify, uh, but also a number of other customers, a large cable operator in the US, and also um, the, one of the world's largest uh, smartphone vendor based in California. I guess you can guess what I'm talking about. Um, so what are the needs of these customers? Basically what they, they want to do is uh, provide an IT as a service capability for their internal users, uh, developers and um, application users uh, on both sides. Uh, it's about providing multi-tenancy, so isolation across the different uh, businesses or departments on demand resource allocation, all provided through um, either user interface and also APIs. Um, having a rich set of uh, security policy configuration enforcement, being able to really implement all the security policies directly on the endpoints in, in the servers for uh, scalability and performance. And leveraging the RBAC uh, framework that is already used typically for OpenStack with Keystone. And that's, um, I'm just checking, yeah, that's pretty much covered here, maybe one element worth mentioning here. The entire connectivity is done using our product, which is software based at the same time in order to provide connectivity outside of the data center we use our MX routers, which are used as data center gateway to provide connectivity either to public internet or to other data centers. Um, another similar use case that was implemented by Symantec is around big data. Um, so configuration here is very similar with the uh, difference that all the Hadoop clusters obviously run on bare metal and that's how they are integrated. Um, this use case also leverage our virtual firewall VSRMs to provide security across the different tenants and networks. Um, and, and as in the previous use case, all the service is self-provisioned and leveraging our set of APIs for the deployment of the different uh, network policies. Now if we talk a bit about public and hybrid cloud, this is um, a use case that was built by CloudWatt. So CloudWatt is a French-based uh, operator that provides public uh, cloud uh, services. It was acquired by Orange a couple of years ago and it's one of the contributors to Open Control. So what they wanted to deliver was a secure multi-tenancy infrastructure to allow their own customers to onboard their application and also have an uh, as-a-service model for the different networking and security functions like VPN as a service, load balancer as a service, firewall as a service, um, all of this uh, using uh, policy uh, uh, creation that are defined directly by the end users. And one, one of the key differentiators that we are providing uh, in this solution is the analytics capabilities which give visibility not only to uh, CloudWatt but also to their users in terms of what's happening on the network, having monitoring tools. Um, okay, well, how much time I have left? 
Another use case that we have with Workday, which is one of the top five SaaS providers in the US, is uh, providing SaaS cloud. Um, so here, it was about giving multi-tenancy capability, has high, uh, high-scale SaaS workloads for the enterprise uh, services. I don't know if there is any uh, Workday user in the room. Anyone? So it, it's really replacing the, the typical um, HR, uh, office and enterprise, ERP types of services provided in a, in a SaaS type of uh, environment. Um, and here what we've done is the integration with the private and then VPC services. Um, all, all this is done using the source, uh, sorry, <coughs> a self-service portal that allows all the customers to, um, to register. Uh, the internal developers can request services in the different clouds that are distributed uh, across the whole uh, Workday network using different availability zones. Uh, some of the apps are running in OpenStack and other apps which are not virtualized, are directly running in, in Docker. Um, in the interest of time, I will probably skip this use case and I'll just uh, give you a brief coverage of the um, Internet of Things use case, which is actually the one that TCP Cloud developed. Um, so here it's one of the key components, as mentioned earlier, is the fact that we have a small OpenStack distributed implementations across uh, the, the entire uh, area with inside each um, Raspberry Pi VRDR engine that provides the networking connectivity um, between a, a local, uh, I think these are like, uh, lights in the case of smart city, but it could be pretty much any smart device that needs to be connected to internet. Um, and so Contrail is providing the network orchestration across these different uh, distributed uh, compute nodes that run inside the Raspberry Pis and the centralized data center that runs the application. So just to summarize the key differentiators of the control solution uh, compared with, let's say, regular uh, neutron capabilities that you, you could get with a vanilla OpenStack, the performance that the VR provides, it's capable not only of running layer 2 and layer 3 routing, but also VPN, layer 2 and layer 3 VPN connectivity, and layer 4 plus firewall capabilities without the need to, uh, to deploy or steer the traffic through actual virtual firewall. Obviously, if you need to go all the way to layer 7 firewall, that's where you need to run and deploy your virtual network firewall. And the scaling, we have um, a, a fully distributed uh, uh, control plane where you can basically horizontally scale it by deploying more instances, all the instances of the control plane synchronize their state using BGP. And on top of it, you can also have a hierarchy of controllers with a master controller that is managing a number of distributed controllers that could be deployed across multiple data centers. Every component uh, is duplicated um, for high availability. We are using open, star, uh, sorry, open source uh, components, standard protocols like BGP, OBSDB to provide maximum interoperability with the other components and vendors in the solution, whether it's any type of hardware vendor for the servers, for the routers, the switches, but also the different OSS and DSS uh, uh, vendors. And last but not least, the analytics engines that give you uh, real-time flow reporting and also historical visibility 
uh, log analysis and uh, correlation between the underlay and the uh, overlay network containers. And that's pretty much it. Questions? Okay.